was wealthy, a widower without children. It's possible for some dishonest person to try and get his money away from him. When the widower lost his only child in a drowning some nine years ago, the most logical way to get the money, since the body of the drowned child was never recovered, would be to pretend to be the dead girl. Hello, creeps. This is T4Y, opening the doors of the Mystery Playhouse. Tonight we celebrate the return of the master of them all, the inimitable Philo Vance. The story, the case of the girl who came back. About ten minutes ago, in Philo Vance's apartment, the eminent detective has just finished luncheon, alone. Now, however, he has a guest, and she's very much at home, even with his servant, Curry. Lay out Mr. Vance's water wings, will you, Curry? We're going swimming. We are not. Uh, Mr. Vance. Vance, really, it's a terrific day. I phoned Washington, and there isn't any detecting for me to do. Please take me swimming. Tony Island, no doubt. Along with seven million others who've got the same idea. It'd be fun. Uh, Mr. Vance. It would be a nightmare. I loathe floundering about in the water like a canned salmon. What is it, Curry? You are a canned salmon. Uh, this gentleman, Mr. Vance, remember he's been waiting for you to finish lunch? The one in the hall? He was sitting there when I came in. Uh, don't come in, Terry. Uh, yes, sir. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's his name? Uh, Martin, Mr. Vance. John Martin. Maybe he'll take me swimming. Uh, you can dream, can't you? <laughs> Mr. Martin? Mr. Martin, come in, please. Thank you. You're, uh, you're Mr. Pilo Vance? I am. This is Miss Randall, my, uh, swimming instructor. <laughs> uh, I beg your pardon? How do you do, Mr. Martin? You're, you're probably wondering why I'm here, Mr. Vance. I just had to come to you. This thing is so... So unbelievable, so fantastic. Let's hear it, Mr. Martin. I, uh, I beg your pardon? Uh, Miss Randall, I ought to say, is a detective, Mr. Martin. In a uh, manner of speaking. Oh, I see. Thanks for the manner of speaking. <laughs> Don't mention it. Uh, just what is your story, Mr. Martin? Perhaps I can suggest someone who will be glad to help. It's horrible, Mr. Vance. You see, I live out on Long Island. Great Neck, Long Island. I have a home there on the water. If I know the section. I'm alone now. My wife died six years ago. I see. You may remember it was in the papers. Our only child was drowned on our beach when she was 11. Oh, I'm sorry. It was a great tragedy, Miss Randall. Mrs. Martin never really got over it. Oh, then this wasn't recent. Oh, no. No, Jean was drowned uh, nine years ago, Mr. Vance. 1936. Yes, yes, that's right. My wife died three years later. The child and I were swimming together. I can remember it so plainly. She ventured out too far while I was on shore, and she... She was caught in a riptide. How horrible. I... I heard her scream, but I couldn't reach her. I saw her body carried out to sea, Mr. Vance. I, I saw it myself. It was recovered? Never. No, from that day to this, her body was never found. Oh, I spent thousands, Mr. Vance, just to give her poor mother that much peace of mind. But her body was never washed in. Well, I am sorry, Mr. Martin. I can understand a tragedy like that, but I don't quite see... Yesterday, Mr. Vance, Jean came home. What? Yes. I didn't quite get that myself. This, this girl, this fraud, Mr. Vance, this cunning little imposter, she came to my home yesterday and tried to tell me she's my own daughter. What in the... But, Mr. Martin, surely, surely you can tell. Why, of course I can tell. She's a scheming little cheat, Mr. Vance. She's no more my Jean than, than this lady is. I hardly see that it's anything to worry about, Mr. Martin. Why not phone the police? I want to, too. I want to do it once. But my law firm bears my name, you see. Unpleasant publicity of that sort, notoriety... No, I owe it to my associates to keep it out of the papers. But obviously, if the girl is an imposter, you can make short work of her. Trip her up on some simple little reference to her past. To her mother. Well, it seems easy, Mr. Martin. That's just it. This girl knows more about me than I do myself. Terrifying, Mr. Vance. She knows the house, the grounds, the countryside. And she swears she's my daughter. I don't mean to be simple. But where does she say she's been all this time? Oh, she has a story for that, too. Says that she was washed up on shore, a complete victim of amnesia. Oh. Yes, yeah, the gall of it. Tried to tell me she's been without memory for nine years and came out of it this week in a fall down the stairs. Mm, she sounds clever. Uh, you don't recognize her, of course. I'm sure she's not my daughter, Mr. Vance. Definitely sure. Well, she would change, naturally. She was 11 when she was drowned. 20 now. Yes, 
She changed a great deal. Oh, not that much, Van. Yet you say she seems well acquainted with her alleged home, Mr. Martin. It's amazing. That's why I can't call the police. Her story is just convincing enough. They'd, they'd drag it through the papers for weeks. She's working with someone, of course. Someone who's told her the right answers. Right, Van? You know, I'd like to meet a girl who would plan a game like this. I really would. Then you'll, you'll help me, Mr. Vance. You'll expose her. Still sold on that swim lane? No. <laughs> Not while you cavort with a 20-year-old ghost, darling. I'll stick with you. And this brings us back to the library, Mr. Vance. Now you've seen the whole estate. Well, I see you're a camera enthusiast, Mr. Martin. Huh? Oh, those enlargements. Yes, I dabble in it. When the war broke out, my doctors told me to do something to quiet my nerves, so I took up photography. Oh, some of these are excellent. I have a dark room downstairs. I'll open it up if you like. I'd enjoy it. And now if you'll send the young lady in, please. I'll tell you how great I am, Mr. Vance. I'm in a terrible strain. Mr. Vance wants to see you. What about? Uh, come in, Miss... Uh... Miss Martin. Jean Martin. Yeah, so we've heard. But sit down, Miss... Miss Martin. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions. I suppose he hired you. On the contrary, I should have paid to meet you. I admire your courage. You're yeah, very funny. You you contend you've been an amnesia victim for nine years. Is that right? That's right. But surely you know where you've been. I remember falling. I must have hit my head because there's a bump on it. And that's all. That's all? When I came to, I was about a block from here. That was last night. You mean you don't know where you've been for nine years? You heard me. Oh, your language, chum. Doesn't quite go with the detour around here. Okay, so maybe the last nine years weren't so good. How do I know? Well, that lane puts you in the well-known place. Listen, mister, I'm Gene Martin, and you and nobody else can prove any different. So let's get down to terms. Terms? What kind of terms? Oh, he didn't tell you that, huh? Well, listen, my grandfather was stinking rich. He was lousy with it, see? And it all came to me. Only my father was to get it if I died. And now you've come back for the money that's rightfully yours. Is that it? You think I'm going to let him keep it? He won't even listen to me. Imagine being so mean. You keep out of this. Careful, girls. You did miss up on one small detail, you know. Jean Martin had a scar on her right wrist. A rather prominent scar. And you haven't. A scar can heal, can't it? I had the scar. It's gone now. It's been gone for years. Oh, brother, you're really good. Listen, you... Wait a minute. Keep talking, Lane. What? There's someone listening at the door. Play it. Oh, I know what I'd like to say. A nice afternoon like this, and we come all the way out here to... Get to join us? Come in. Hey, hey, let go of me. Gladly. And who, might I ask, are you? A long-lost brother, no doubt. Well, I... I work here. I'm the chauffeur. That's right, he is. Bill and I used to play together when we were kids. Would you say that slowly, honey? I'm a little sick today. His father worked here for us before. Bill was brought up on the estate. We used to play together all the time. Isn't that right, Bill? I never saw her before in my life. Why, you... But you did live here. You did play with the real Jean Martin. Sure. She was a great little kid. I taught her to swim. You remember a scar on her wrist, of course? Sure I do. Right here. About an inch and a half. She got it cutting a watermelon at a picnic out on the lawn. Heck, I went with her when my dad drove her into town to the doctor. I see. Well, you've been a great help, Bill. You'll be around if I need you again. Yeah. I'll be around. Thank you. Listen, he's lying, I tell you. He remembers me. He must. Sure, honey. We all do. Now, will you ask your papa to come in here, Jean? Listen, you can stop cracking, both of you, because I'm Jean Martin, brother, and that's sick. Ask him to come in, please. Sure. Go ahead. Play detective all your life. Hey, Daddy. You're through, Mr. Vance? Well, it wasn't much effort, Mr. Martin. The local police could have handled the situation nicely. Uh, let's... All sit down a moment. Sure, I got all the time in the world. You scheming little... Take it easy, Daddy. On the way out here, young lady, Mr. Martin explained that you're unusually well acquainted with this house. In short, that you can answer questions an outsider wouldn't know. I told you I used to live here. Remember? You knew, for instance, that your mother played the piano. That the Rose Garden was once to the north rather than where it is now. That the roof on the east wing is new. Yes, there was a great deal more, Mr. Vance. It's uncanny. Well, obviously the girl's been well coached. Is uh, Bill in on the deal, Jean? What? My chauffeur, Bill? We've met him, Mr. Martin. Why, that's absurd. I practically raised the boy myself. His father died right here in my employ. Try again, Mr. Detective. Uh, suppose... Suppose we try money, Jean. That interest you? Sure it does. If the money belongs to me. Don't forget I'm Jean Martin. 
You know, Mr. Martin, the girl might be telling the truth. Oh, that. Why, that's ridiculous, Mr. Vance. I'm surprised you mentioned such a thing. Stranger things have happened, you know. And the girl is right. Childhood scars do disappear in time. But, but I... I As don't... for her amnesia, that's entirely possible, too. Now you're doing okay. Vance, what in the... Uh, my way? suggestion, Mr. Martin, is that we settle this some way now. Right here in this room. I... I think I'll have a drink. Oh, perhaps that would help us all. Lane? You sound like you've had ten, Vance. Why, any food. Later, pet. When we're alone. There's only scotch here in the library, if you... Well, uh... that will do nicely, thanks. Let me pour the drink. I'm your daughter, you know. You want one, too? Oh, I might as well. I feel it already. Here you are, Mr. Vance. Ah, thank you. Now then, let's drink to... to the success of our bargaining. How's that? To the success of what we'll accomplish here. <laughs> Mr. Vance, wait! What, Miss Martin? Vance, no, don't drink that. It's poison, Vance. That glass is full of poison. Vance! Well, I... Uh, I seem to have spilled my drink. Sam, you didn't drink it. Uh, thanks, Mr. Martin. No. Well, I'm sorry I had to knock it out of your hand, Mr. Vance. You devil. Why, listen. Smell that, Mr. Vance. Why, I know that odor anywhere. It's the emotion I use in my dark room downstairs. You little fiend. You knew I kept chemicals in there. Then, when Mr. Vance was going to expose you, you decided to poison him. Good Lord. I, I am grateful to you, Mr. Martin. It seems I almost drank a developer highball. You're off the beam, all of you. Why, I... You keep quiet. I've had enough out of you. Well, Mr. Vance, shall I call the police? It won't be necessary, Mr. Martin. Miss Randall and I are driving into town. We'll take our young friend with us. Why, you chump. Oh, and I'd like to take Bill, too, Mr. Martin. I'm not entirely sure he isn't mixed up in this. Oh, take them all. I just want this woman out of my house. I assure you, Mr. Martin, you've seen the last of her. I'll call if I need you. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, Vance, dear. Yes, Lane? Is it fair if I ask just one little question? Yes, by all means. What in the name of what are we doing here in your apartment? Let's take these two down to the district attorney's office and be done with it. Look, Mr. Vance, you got me all wrong. I never saw this dame before until last night. Oh, yes, you did, Billy. Yes, you did. All right, kids. I think the show's gone far enough. You can take that layer of skin off your wrist, Jean. Vance, what in the world is... This is what I mean. Let me have your wrist a moment. Get away from her. It's all right, Bill. I'm quite convinced she is Jean Martin. Ah, see? Just an ordinary skin patch, isn't it, Jean? And very neatly applied, too. She... She's got the scar. She has. Miss Martin, Miss Randall. How do you do? You win, Mr. Grant. You found her, of course, Bill? Yes, sir. I never gave up looking for Jean. The amnesia story is true, then. Quite true, Mr. Grant. I came to on the beach about six miles from our house. On the day I was supposed to be drowned, I mean. I was 11 years old. The doctors figured a wave threw her up against a log or something in the water, Mr. Vance. Her head was cut. And then, Jean? Well, I couldn't remember anything, Mr. Vance. For days I'd walked around in a kind of a dream, and then finally I was taken to the Good Shepherd Orphanage. Well, you can phone them and check if you like. I've been working there for my boarding room. Go on. Well, just as Bill said, he's always looked for me. He never believed I was drowned. I couldn't afford to hire detectives or advertise, Mr. Vance, especially working right there in the Martin home. I'd just ask questions and write letters. Then when a reply sounded worthwhile, well, I'd investigate in my time off. And one letter came to the Good Shepherd asking about an amnesia case in 1936. So they told Bill about me. Bill came up to see me and... Well, here we are. I see. Well, that clears up a great deal. Vance, you're out of your mind. Why, those two are bigger phonies than I thought. Why, Lane? Well, for one thing, why did our hero here keep all this from the girl's father? Why not let him spend his money looking for his own daughter? He thought she was dead. Oh, and you knew better, I suppose. Mr. Martin was careful that there was almost no publicity at the time of the drowning, Miss Randall. Just a little too careful. Why did he want to keep it quiet when the body wasn't found? Okay, we'll skip that for a minute. Suppose you are Jean Martin. Why the mystery? Why cover up the one scar that proves it? Why play the tough little mall with us all afternoon? And you, Bill. You pretended you didn't even know her. What goes on here? Fair question, Lane. Going to answer, Jean? Well, you're convinced that I am Jean Martin, Mr. Vance. Beyond a doubt, Jean. Even without the scar. I knew it before we left your home. All right, then I'll tell you. 
My father tried to murder me. What? Yes, I know that sounds strange, but that's true. I wasn't carried away by the tide that day. And he wasn't on the shore, as he said. He held her head underwater, Mr. Vance. Held her and, and pushed her out to sea. And when I got back, I knew if I proved I was Dean right away, he'd... He'd try to murder me again. And if I went to the police, he'd call me an imposter. He'd even lie about my scar. So the only thing to do was to throw him off his guard by convincing him that I was a fake. You see, we hoped we could find a way to trick him into admitting he tried to kill her. We planned it together, Mr. Vance. And when Mr. Martin called you in, we didn't know what to do. You see, Lane? Just get me, Vance. I'm so dizzy now, just let me sit here and spin. (laughs) Well, it's quite simple, really. Martin called me in to bolster his own case. Now I think we'll unbolster it a little. But how, Mr. Vance? What can we do now? He's got all Gene's money, everything. Gene, I told you once today you've got nerve. Think you can use it again? I can try, Mr. Vance. Good. Now, here's exactly what I want you to do. Martin, sir. Yes, Bill? Uh, that boat's loose again, sir. I'm afraid it's been damaged hitting against the dock. Confound it. Can't you keep that boat tied up properly? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Martin. I I wasn't here this afternoon, you know. Oh, yes, yes, that's true. I'm glad you came out clean in that nasty mess, Bill. Mr. Vance called and told me the police are convinced that you had nothing to do with that, uh, that girl. Yes, sir. Well, we'll just forget the whole incident, son. Uh, boat damaged, you say? Uh, yes, sir. I wish you'd go down and look for yourself, Mr. Martin, and you can tell me what's to be done. All right, I will. Nice night like this, I ought to be outside. Yes, go along, sir, and I'll look at it directly. Yes, sir. I'll be in my quarters if you want them. Thank you, Bill. Beautiful night. Really beautiful. I ought to get the camera. Moon like that, I might get a good shot without a light at all. Good boy, Bill. Comes a good, solid start. Well, I should have told him to turn on the footlights down here. How does he think I can inspect the boat without light? Yeah. My, what a wonderful night. <laughs> That song. where the water is deep and cold. And then you took hold of my neck, remember? You held me and you pushed me down, down into the water. Remember how I tried to scream? Remember how I felt struggling in your arms? Do you... You you didn't die. You You tried to murder me in this water. You held me down until you thought I was dead. But I didn't drown, Daddy. You see, I'm here now. I'm right here in front of you. You fool. You think you could come back now? Did you think I'd let you come back after all I did? That money's mine, and it's going to stay mine. I thought I murdered you once. This time, I'll do it right. Oh, oh you little fool. Oh, say what? Well, you'll see, you little idiot. You'll find out. I about this, Martin. And don't move, please. I have a gun. Man, where'd you come from? From under the pier, in a word. Oh, Bill. Light, please. Right, Mr. Bass. 
beautifully, Lane. He tried to drown her just as I said he would. You all right, Jean? Get up on the pier, Martin. Watch him, Bill. I'll help Jean. Jean. Oh, Jean, darling. It worked. I heard the whole thing. Yes, You think this is the please? And escort Mr. Martin up to my car. You'll find Curry and some officers waiting. Yes, sir. Come on, Martin. This is the end of the line. Well, uh, do you by any chance have a spare towel, Lane? The bottom rung of that ladder down there was just a little wet. Mm -hmm. Sam, tell me something before I bust. (laughs) Bust. Oh, don't be stuffy. Why were you sure Jean was Jean? Because you saw the fake scar tissue on her wrist? Well, that helped, Lane. But I wasn't sure until Martin tried to make it look as if she'd poisoned my drink. Mm, But... (laughs) Elementary, as that man would say. Martin told me he installed his photographic room after the market crash in 1939. Remember? Yes, of course, but I still don't... But, 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 darling. When he turned down Jean and accused her of stealing chemicals from it for my drink, he said she knew the dark room was there. So now, she couldn't help if she were his daughter. He drowned her three years before it was put in, and if she was a phony, she was too well coached to betray herself that way. And finally, Pet, the dark room was locked. Martin said as much himself. You know, Van, in a way, you're rather hot stuff. <laughs> Cold and wet at the moment. Well, give me that towel. Oh, what's so funny? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking, you really got that swim after all. Thank you, Philo Vance, for the case of the girl who came back. Now it's getting early again. This is T4Y closing the doors of the Mystery Playhouse. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Good night. Sleep tight. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.